They told us we could sign the bombs. One drop of honey makes a world of difference. One drop of honey makes learning sweet. Add one drop of honey to Talmud Torah. And you've got a team that can't be beat. All starts with the children. Open minds and smile. In 2006, I was in Israel during the Second Lebanon War. And at one point, the group that I was with went to Tel Nof Air Force Base. And while we were there, we were driven out to uh, one of the tarmacs where there was an F-15 or F-16, I don't remember which, sitting there. They had attached the bombs to the underbelly of the wings or the plane, and uh, the plane was about to take off to Lebanon where it would be dropping those bombs and inevitably killing people. But before it went we were told that we could sign the bombs and they handed out Sharpies. I got really, really uncomfortable. I imagined the messages that people would be writing on these bombs. Screw you. You deserve it. You're hated. Murderers, terrorists. And Maybe all that was true, but it made me uncomfortable for us to be celebrating that, for us to be celebrating and signing our names to something that was going to cause so much destruction. Because I was visibly upset by this, one of the service members took me aside and we were talking. And he explained to me that what Israel does, it doesn't celebrate. It does what it does because it has to. Israel has to protect itself. Israel has to strike back back against its enemies. But that doesn't mean that Israel celebrates those strikes. Turns out I was mistaken. What people signed and wrote on those bombs was not... Uh, negative things toward the Lebanese people, but instead prayers and wishes for the pilots of the airplane, wishes for the IDF and for the people of Israel. The whole idea of celebrating another person's pain, celebrating even when our worst enemies have to suffer, is a terribly uncomfortable idea for Jews. Just on Pesach, on this past Passover, one of the central pieces of our Seder that almost everybody who celebrates a Seder takes part in this is when we diminish our joy by removing some of the wine from our Kiddush cup. That's symbolic of of the fact that we cannot celebrate when anybody, even our worst enemy, is suffering or has died. There's the famous Midrash of how the Israelites are crossing over the sea and the angels, the ministering angels, begin to sing, celebrating the, the, the punishment that has befallen the Egyptians. And God cries out and says, Stop! My children are drowning in the sea. The Egyptians were God's children. Our enemies, no matter how horrible they are, are also God's children. There was a quote that's been circulating around this week from Martin Luther King Jr., which says, I mourn the loss of thousands of precious lives, but I will not rejoice in the death of one, not even an enemy. Returning hate for hate multiplies hate, adding deeper darkness to a night already devoid of stars. Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. This quote was circulating around, I think, because this week we saw the death, finally, of Osama bin Laden, one of the worst, if not the worst, terrorists of all time. And for many of us, for myself included, we struggled with whether we should be celebrating this. This is a man who caused unmentionable pain, who killed thousands of people. Should we not celebrate that a person like that is no longer on this earth? Should we not celebrate that America was able to stand up for itself and to bring this man to justice? Maybe. But on the other hand, was he not one of God's children? Yes, he was one of God's children who went astray. Perhaps he was even the Russia, the wicked child. But he was a child. 
I was heartened by some reports and it's hard to tell what reports are real and what reports are fabricated, but I was heartened by some reports that said that when we went in, when the, when the American troops went in, our goal was not to kill. In fact, our goal is usually not to kill. Our goal is to accomplish our mission with the least number of casualties. And just a rumor perhaps, but if Osama bin Laden had uh, given himself up, then perhaps we would not have killed him. I'm heartened by that because what that says is that we were not out for blood revenge. That we're better than that. We're more human than that. That we see even in our worst enemies a child of God. That we see even in those who we despise, who we hate, and even those who hurt us terribly, we see in them humanity. I'm torn, like a lot of people this week, about how to feel. On the one hand, I'm glad he's not here anymore. On the other, I'm uncomfortable being so joyous. So perhaps like the Israelites, I'm still walking through that sea with some people singing and rejoicing and others walking ahead and recognizing that what has happened this week, while perhaps good for the world, was still a loss for the world. I'm not sure what to make of it yet. Maybe you do. Until next time, Lehi Trout. Yeah,